I stared at Nate's phone, my hands trembling. The message glared back at me, mocking everything I thought I knew about our marriage. Can't wait to see you tonight, babe. Same hotel as last time. My stomach churned. I heard Nate's footsteps on the stairs and quickly set the phone down exactly where I'd found it on the kitchen counter. Hey, honey, Nate said, breezing into the kitchen. He kissed my cheek, oblivious to the storm raging inside me. What's for dinner? I forced a smile. Just a salad. I'm not very hungry. Nate frowned. Everything okay? Actually, I said, my voice steadier than I felt. We need to talk. His eyes darted to his phone on the counter, then back to me. What's going on, Claire? I took a deep breath. I saw the message, Nate. Who is she? The color drained from his face. Claire, I can explain. Don't. I cut him off. Just tell me the truth. How long has this been going on? Nate slumped into a chair. A few months. He mumbled. The admission hit me like a physical blow. Months? I echoed. And you never thought to mention it? I didn't want to hurt you, he said weakly. I laughed, a harsh sound that surprised even me. Well, congratulations. You failed spectacularly. Just then our son Jamie's voice piped up from the doorway. Mommy? Daddy? Why are you yelling? I turned to see our four-year-old clutching his favorite stuffed elephant, his eyes wide with concern. Guilt washed over me. How could I have forgotten he was upstairs? It's okay, sweetie, I said, forcing a smile. Mommy and Daddy are just having a grown-up talk. Why don't you go play in your room for a bit? Jamie hesitated, then nodded, and trudged back upstairs. I turned back to Nate, my voice low and dangerous. We are far from done with this conversation, but right now, I need to not be around you. I grabbed my phone and car keys, ignoring Nate's protests as I stormed out of the house. I drove aimlessly for a while, trying to process the bomb that had just detonated in my life. Eventually, I found myself parked outside my mother's house. Ruth opened the door before I could even knock. One look at my face told her everything she needed to know. Oh, honey, she said, pulling me into a hug. Come in and tell me what happened. We settled on her worn floral couch, the same one I'd cried on as a teenager after my first heartbreak. Now, here I was again, my world crumbling around me. Nate's having an affair, I said, the words burning my throat. Ruth's face hardened. That son of a... She caught herself, taking a deep breath. How did you find out? I recounted the story, my mother's face growing stormier with each detail. What are you going to do? She asked when I finished. I shook my head. I don't know, I can't just leave, there's Jamie to think about and our whole life together. Ruth took my hands in hers. Claire, listen to me. You are strong, smart, and capable. You don't need a man who doesn't respect you. Whatever you decide, I'm here for you. Her words were like a lifeline, pulling me back from the edge of despair. Thanks, Mom, I whispered. Just then, my phone buzzed. A text from Nate, please come home, we need to talk. I showed it to Ruth, who scowled. You don't owe him anything right now. I know, I said, but I need answers, and I need to make sure Jamie's okay. Ruth nodded, reluctantly. Call me if you need anything. And Claire? Her eyes met mine, fierce and protective. Don't let him manipulate you. You deserve better. As I drove home, my mind raced. What would I find when I got there? Could our marriage survive this betrayal? And most importantly, how could I protect Jamie from the fallout? I pulled into our driveway, stealing myself for the confrontation to come. Whatever happened next, I knew one thing for certain, nothing would ever be the same again. I walked into our house, my heart pounding. Nate was pacing in the living room, his face a mask of guilt and anxiety. Claire, I'm so sorry, he began. I held up a hand. Save it. I want the whole truth, Nate. No more lies. He nodded, sinking onto the couch. Her name is Veronica. She's from work. It started at a conference six months ago. Six months. Half a year of deception. I felt sick. Why? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Nate ran his hands through his hair. I don't know. Things between us have been different since Jamie was born. Veronica made me feel... Don't you dare, I snapped. Don't you dare blame our son or me for your choices. You're right, he said quickly. It's all on me. I'll end it, Claire. I promise. We can work through this. I laughed bitterly. You think it's that simple? That you can just say sorry and everything goes back to normal? No, of course not, Nate said. But we have a family, a life together. Don't throw that away. His words triggered a memory. Suddenly, I was transported back to our first date, ten years ago. 
Nate's boyish grin as he nervously asked me out for coffee. The way my heart fluttered when he took my hand. How did we get from there to here? Claire? Nate's voice snapped me back to the present. What are you thinking? I shook my head. I'm thinking about how different things used to be. Remember our first apartment? How we'd stay up all night talking about our dreams? Nate's eyes softened. Of course I do. Those were good times. What happened to us, Nate? He reached for my hand, but I pulled away. Life happened, I guess. Work, stress, raising Jamie. But we can get back to that, Claire. I know we can. I wanted to believe him. Part of me ached to forgive, to try and salvage what we once had. But the larger part, the part still reeling from his betrayal, couldn't let go so easily. I need time, I said finally, and space. I'm going to stay at my mom's for a while. Nate's face fell. Please don't go. We can figure this out together. I can't be here right now, Nate. I can't look at you without seeing her. As if on cue, Nate's phone buzzed. We both froze, staring at it. Answer it, I said coldly. Nate hesitated, then picked up the phone. His face paled as he read the message. It's her, isn't it? I asked, already knowing the answer. He nodded, looking miserable. Claire, I swear, I'll end it right now. I stood up. I'm going to pack some things for Jamie and me. When I come back down, I want you to have told her it's over, and I want to see the message. I climbed the stairs, my legs feeling like lead. In Jamie's room, I found him playing quietly with his toys. Hey, sweetie, I said, forcing a smile. How about we have a sleepover at Grandma's house? Jamie's face lit up. Really? Can we have ice cream? I laughed, the sound almost foreign to my ears. Of course we can. As I packed our bags, I heard Nate's muffled voice from downstairs. Was he really ending it? Or was this just another performance for my benefit? When I returned to the living room, Nate held out his phone. It's done, he said. Read it yourself. I took the phone, scanning the messages. Nate had indeed told Veronica it was over. Her response was a string of angry emojis followed by, This isn't the end of this, Nate. You'll regret this. A chill ran down my spine. What does she mean by that? Nate shrugged helplessly. I don't know. She's probably just upset. I handed back the phone, suddenly eager to leave. We'll be at my mom's. I'll let you know when I'm ready to talk more. As Jamie and I drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was far from over. Veronica's threat echoed in my mind, and I wondered what other surprises Nate's betrayal would bring. A week had passed since I'd left Nate, and the gnawing doubt in my stomach wouldn't subside. Despite his promises, something felt off. I couldn't shake the feeling that he was still hiding something. You need to take care of yourself, Claire, Mom said over breakfast. You look exhausted. I managed a weak smile. I'm fine, Mom, just worried about Jamie. She squeezed my hand. That boy is resilient. He takes after his mother. As if on cue, Jamie bounded into the kitchen. Mommy, when are we going home? The question pierced my heart. Soon, sweetie. We're just having an extended vacation at Grandma's, remember? After dropping Jamie at preschool, I made a decision. I had to know the truth once and for all. I parked down the street from Nate's office, my heart racing. This was crazy, following my own husband like some kind of amateur detective. But I needed answers. Hours ticked by. Just as I was about to give up, Nate emerged from the building. He looked around furtively before hurrying to his car. I waited a moment, then followed at a safe distance. To my surprise, Nate didn't head home. Instead, he drove to an upscale hotel on the outskirts of town. My stomach churned as I watched him enter the lobby. I waited fifteen agonizing minutes before following. At the reception desk, I put on my best smile. Hi, I'm supposed to meet my husband, Nate Sanford. Could you tell me which room he's in? The receptionist hesitated. I'm sorry, ma'am, but we can't give out that information. I leaned in, lowering my voice. Please, it's our anniversary. I wanted to surprise him. She glanced around, then whispered, Room 412. My hands shook as I rode the elevator. This was it, the moment of truth. I knocked on the door of 412, my heart pounding. Nate answered, his face draining of color when he saw me. Claire? What are you? I pushed past him into the room. It was empty, but I could smell perfume in the air. Where is she, Nate? Who? There's no one here, he stammered. I stormed into the bathroom, throwing open the shower curtain. Empty. But then I noticed the window was open, a slight breeze rustling the curtains. Did she climb out the window? I asked incredulously. We're on the fourth floor. Nate's shoulders sagged. 
Claire, I can explain. Save it, I spat. I've heard enough of your explanations. As I turned to leave, something caught my eye. A briefcase, partially hidden under the bed. I grabbed it before Nate could stop me. Claire, don't. I popped it open. Inside were stacks of cash and what looked like financial documents. What is this? I demanded. Nate's face was ashen. It's not what you think. Really? Because it looks like you're involved in something illegal. He reached for the briefcase, but I held it away. Claire, please, you don't understand. I'm in trouble. For a moment, I saw fear in his eyes. Real, genuine fear. Despite everything, a part of me wanted to comfort him, to help him out of whatever mess he'd gotten himself into. But then I remembered the lies, the betrayal, the shattered trust. You're right, Nate. I don't understand, I said coldly. And I'm done trying to. I turned to leave, briefcase in hand. Claire, wait! Nate called desperately. If you walk out that door with those documents, you'll be in danger, too. I paused, my hand on the doorknob. What kind of danger? Nate's voice was barely above a whisper. The kind that doesn't forgive mistakes. A chill ran down my spine. What had Nate gotten mixed up in? And more importantly, how was I going to protect Jamie from whatever storm was coming? I looked back at Nate, seeing not the man I'd loved for years, but a stranger. I'll take my chances, I said, and walked out the door. As I drove away, my mind raced. I had evidence of Nate's affair and now, potentially, of criminal activity. But at what cost? What kind of danger had I just invited into our lives? One thing was certain. Nothing would ever be the same again. I clutched the briefcase tightly as I drove to my parents' house, my mind reeling. What had Nate gotten himself into? And more importantly, what was I going to do about it? Mom was waiting for me when I arrived, her face etched with concern. Claire, what's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. I collapsed into her arms, the weight of everything finally crashing down on me. Through tears, I told her about following Nate, the hotel room, and the mysterious briefcase. Oh, honey, she sighed, stroking my hair. What a mess. Just then, my phone buzzed. A text from Nate. Family dinner at my parents' tonight. Please come. We need to talk. I showed Mom the message, my stomach churning. I can't face them, Mom. Not after everything that's happened. She squeezed my hand. You're stronger than you know, Claire, and you won't be alone. I'm coming with you. Hours later, we stood on Nate's parents' doorstep. I took a deep breath, stealing myself for what was to come. Miriam answered the door, her smile not quite reaching her eyes. Claire, darling, we've missed you. Her gaze flickered to Mom. Ruth, what a surprise. Mom's grip on my arm tightened. I'm here to support my daughter, Miriam. I'm sure you understand. The tension in the room was palpable as we sat down to dinner. Nate looked haggard, avoiding my eyes. His father, Walter, cleared his throat. So, Claire, when are you coming home? This little vacation of yours has gone on long enough, don't you think? I set down my fork, my appetite vanishing. It's not a vacation, Walter. Nate and I are separated. Miriam, Miriam gasped dramatically. Separated, but why? Every marriage has its rough patches, dear. You can't just give up. I didn't give up, I said, my voice shaking. Nate gave up when he decided to have an affair. The room fell silent. Nate's face paled. Claire, please. No, Nate. I cut him off. I'm done hiding the truth. Your parents deserve to know what kind of man their son really is. Miriam's eyes flashed. Now listen here, young lady. I won't have you speaking ill of my son in his own home. Whatever issues you two have, I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding. Something inside me snapped. Years of biting my tongue, of trying to please this woman, came rushing to the surface. A misunderstanding? Is that what you call cheating on your wife and getting involved in illegal activities? The room erupted into chaos. Walter demanded explanations, Miriam hurled accusations, and Nate pleaded for everyone to calm down. Through it all, Mom stood by my side, a pillar of strength. Finally, I'd had enough. I stood up, my chair scraping loudly against the floor. I came here tonight hoping for honesty, for a chance to move forward, but I see now that was never going to happen. I turned to Nate my voice steady despite the storm of emotions inside me. I know about the money, Nate. I know you're in trouble, but until you're ready to tell me the whole truth, we have nothing left to discuss. As I walked towards the door, Miriam's voice rang out. If you walk out that door, Claire, don't expect to be welcomed back. You made vows, for better or worse. I paused, my hand on the doorknob. Without turning around, I said, You're right, Miriam. I did make vows. 
but so did Nate, and he broke them long before I did. With that, Mom and I left, the sound of arguing fading behind us. As we drove away, I felt a strange mix of exhaustion and exhilaration. For the first time in years, I had stood up for myself, spoken my truth. I'm proud of you, Claire, Mom said softly. I managed a small smile. Thanks, Mom. But what do I do now? She patted my hand. Now, we figure out what's in that briefcase, and then, my dear, we fight. As we pulled into her driveway, I made a decision. No more hiding, no more playing the victim. Whatever Nate was involved in, whatever dangers lay ahead, I would face them head on. For myself, and for Jamie. The real battle was just beginning. The morning after the disastrous dinner with Nate's parents, I woke up with a sense of clarity I hadn't felt in months. It was time to take control of my life, for Jamie's sake and my own. Mom, I said over coffee, I need to move out, permanently. Ruth nodded, unsurprised. I think that's wise, honey. You know you and Jamie are welcome here as long as you need. I shook my head. Thanks, but I need to do this on my own. I can't keep hiding behind you. As I packed Jamie's things, my phone buzzed incessantly. Texts from Nate, voicemails from Miriam, even a message from Walter. I ignored them all. Just as I zipped up the last suitcase, there was a knock at the door. My heart sank when I saw Nate standing there, looking haggard. Claire, please, he began, but I cut him off. No, Nate, I'm done listening to your excuses. He pushed past me into the house. You don't understand. I'm in trouble, real trouble. And now you've got that briefcase. Claire, you're in danger, too. I felt a chill run down my spine, but I stood my ground. What kind of trouble, Nate? What have you done? He ran his hands through his hair, his eyes darting around nervously. I... I got involved with some people. For the money. I thought I could handle it, but it spiraled out of control. What people? I demanded. I can't tell you that. It's not safe. He reached for my hand, but I pulled away. Claire, please, come home. We can figure this out together. For a moment, I wavered. The man before me looked so much like the Nate I'd fallen in love with years ago. But then I remembered the lies, the betrayal, the years of manipulation. No, I said firmly. I'm leaving, Nate. Jamie and I deserve better than this. His face hardened. You can't take my son away from me. Watch me, I shot back. Just then, Jamie came bounding down the stairs. Daddy, he cried, running into Nate's arms. My heart clenched as I watched them embrace. How could I separate a father from his son? But how could I stay with a man I no longer trusted? Nate looked at me over Jamie's head, his eyes pleading. One more chance, Claire? For Jamie's sake. I was about to respond when my phone buzzed again. A text from an unknown number. Meet me at Riverside Park in one hour. Come alone. I have information about your husband's activities. My mind raced. Could this be Veronica, Nate's mistress? Or someone more sinister? Claire? Nate's voice snapped me back to reality. What are you going to do? I looked at Jamie, then at Nate, then down at my phone. In that moment, I made my decision. I'm leaving, I said, my voice stronger than I felt. Jamie's coming with me. When you're ready to tell me the whole truth, Nate, you know where to find me. Nate's face crumpled. Claire, please. No, I cut him off. I'm done being manipulated. I'm done being lied to. Whatever you're involved in, I want no part of it. I scooped up Jamie, who began to cry, reaching for his father. The sound tore at my heart, but I steeled myself. Mommy, why can't Daddy come? Jamie sobbed. It's complicated, sweetie, I murmured, shooting a glare at Nate. But I promise everything will be okay. As I loaded Jamie and our bags into the car, Nate stood on the porch, looking lost. Part of me wanted to run back to believe his promises one more time, but I knew I couldn't. I started the engine, my resolve strength strengthening with each second. Whatever information this mysterious V had, whatever dangers lay ahead, I would face them on my own terms. As we drove away, Jamie's sniffles quieting in the back seat, I glanced at the clock. Fifty minutes until the meeting at Riverside Park. Fifty minutes to decide whether to walk into what could be a trap, or to drive away and never look back. Either way, there was no turning back now. The life I had known was over. It was time to forge a new path, no matter how treacherous it might be. My heart raced as I pulled into Riverside Park. Jamie safely dropped off with Mom. The mysterious text from V had consumed my thoughts during the drive. Was I walking into a trap, or would this finally provide the answers I desperately needed? I spotted a lone figure on a bench overlooking the river. As I approached, I realized it was a woman, her face hidden beneath large sunglasses. 
Claire Sanford? she asked, her voice low and tense. I nodded, my throat suddenly dry. Are you V? She removed her sunglasses, revealing a face I recognized from company photos. Veronica Blake, Nate's colleague and mistress. We need to talk, she said, gesturing for me to sit. I hesitated, then sat down, keeping a wary distance. Why did you ask me here? Veronica reached into her bag and pulled out a thick manila envelope. Because you deserve to know the truth about your husband. All of it. With trembling hands, I opened the envelope. Inside were photos, documents, and what looked like financial statements. As I flipped through them, my stomach churned. There was Nate, shaking hands with men I didn't recognize, exchanging briefcases in shadowy parking lots. Financial records showing massive transfers to offshore accounts. And photos. Oh, God, the photos. Nate and Veronica in intimate embraces, yes, but also Nate with other women I didn't recognize. How long? I managed to choke out. The affair? Six months, Veronica replied, her voice bitter. The illegal activities? Much longer. I looked up at her, confusion and anger warring inside me. Why are you showing me this? Why now? Veronica's face hardened. Because Nate used me, just like he used you. I thought we had something special, but I was just another pawn in his game. And now, now I'm in danger too. A chill ran down my spine. What kind of danger? She leaned in close, her voice barely above a whisper. Nate's been embezzling money from the company, funneling it through fake accounts. But he got greedy started working with some very dangerous people. When I found out and threatened to expose him, he... her voice broke. He said he'd make sure I'd regret it if I ever told anyone. My mind reeled. The Nate I thought I knew, the man I'd married and had a child with, seemed like a stranger now. Why should I believe you? I asked, even as the evidence in my hands told its own damning story. Veronica's eyes met mine, filled with a mix of fear and determination. Because right now... You're the only person who can help me bring him down, and in doing so, protect yourself and your son. As if on cue, my phone buzzed. A text from an unknown number. We know you have the documents. Return them, or your family pays the price. I showed Veronica the message, watching the color drain from her face. They know, she whispered. Oh, God, they know. Panic clawed at my throat. Who are they? What do we do? Veronica stood abruptly. We need to go. Now. It's not safe here. As we hurried towards the parking lot, I heard the screech of tires. A black SUV came to a stop in front of us, and two men in dark suits stepped out. Mrs. Samford, one of them said, his voice cold. We need you to come with us. Veronica grabbed my arm. Run, she hissed. We took off, sprinting through the park. I could hear heavy footsteps behind us, gaining ground. My lungs burned, and terror threatened to overwhelm me. All I could think about was Jamie my sweet, innocent boy, who might be in danger because of his father's actions, because of the choices I'd made. As we reached my car, Veronica shoved me towards the driver's side. Go! I'll hold them off! But go! she screamed. Find Detective Morris at the 43rd Precinct. Tell him everything. He can help. With shaking hands, I started the car and peeled out of the parking lot. In my rearview mirror, I saw Veronica confronting the men, buying me precious seconds to escape. Tears streamed down my face as I drove, the envelope of damning evidence on the seat beside me. How had my life come to this? Running from shadowy threats, carrying secrets that could destroy everything I held dear, one thing was clear. There was no going back now. Whatever came next, I had to be ready to fight. For myself, for Jamie, and for the truth that had been hidden for far too long. My hands shook as I gripped the steering wheel, speeding towards the 43rd Precinct, Veronica's words echoed in my mind. Find Detective Morris. He can help. I prayed she was right and that she was safe. As I pulled into the parking lot, my phone buzzed. A text from Mom. Where are you? Jamie's asking for you. Guilt and fear clashed in my chest. I needed to protect my son, but I also needed answers. I quickly texted back. Emergency errand. Be there soon. Love you both. Inside the precinct, chaos reigned. I approached the desk sergeant, my voice trembling. I need to speak with Detective Morris. It's urgent. He eyed me suspiciously. And you are? Claire Sanford? Please, it's about my husband, Nate Sanford. There's been a threat. The sergeant's eyes widened. Wait here, he said, disappearing into the back. Moments later, a tall man with graying hair approached. Mrs. Sanford? I'm Detective Morris. Come with me. In his office, I spilled everything. 
the affair, the financial documents, the threats, and Veronica's involvement. Morris listened intently, his face growing grimmer with each revelation. Mrs. Sanford, he said when I finished, your husband is involved with some very dangerous people. We've been investigating this operation for months. My blood ran cold. What kind of operation? Money laundering, fraud, possibly worse. Your husband's company is just the tip of the iceberg. He leaned forward. We need your help to bring them down. Before I could respond, his phone rang. The color drained from his face as he listened. Understood, he said, hanging up. What is it? I asked, dread pooling in my stomach. There's been an incident at your mother's house, a break-in. The world tilted on its axis. Jamie, I whispered, terror gripping my heart. We need to move now, Morris said, grabbing his gun and badge. The drive to Mom's house was a blur. When we arrived, the street was lined with police cars, their lights painting the night in red and blue. I leapt from the car before it had fully stopped. Mom, I screamed, running towards the house. Jamie? An officer tried to stop me, but Morris waved him off. Inside, the house was a disaster. Furniture overturned, pictures shattered on the floor, and there, in the middle of the chaos, stood Nate, holding a terrified Jamie. "'Hello, Claire,' he said, his voice eerily calm. "'I think it's time we had a family meeting, don't you?' "'Let him go, Nate,' I pleaded, my eyes locked on Jamie's tear-stained face. Nate's grip on Jamie tightened. "'You've really made a mess of things, haven't you?' bringing the police into our private affairs. This isn't about us anymore, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Think about Jamie. He needs his father. Something flickered in Nate's eyes. Regret, perhaps? But it was quickly replaced by steely resolve. He needs both of us, and we're going to walk out of here as a family. No one will stop us. Detective Morris appeared behind me, his gun drawn. It's over, Sanford. Let the boy go. Nate's eyes darted between us, desperation etched on his face. In that moment, I saw the man I once loved, scared, cornered, but still my son's father. Nate, I said softly, taking a step forward. Please, this isn't you. The man I married, the father Jamie adores, he's still in there. Don't let this be how our story ends. Time seemed to stand still. I could hear Jamie's quiet sobs, the crackle of police radios outside, my own heart pounding in my ears. Then slowly, Nate's grip on Jamie loosened. Our son broke free, running into my arms. I clutched him tightly, tears of relief streaming down my face. As the officers moved in to arrest Nate, he looked at me one last time. I'm sorry, he whispered, for everything. I watched as they led him away, a storm of emotions raging inside me. Anger, relief, sadness, and an overwhelming sense of uncertainty about what the future held. But as I held Jamie close, feeling his little heart beating against mine, I knew one thing for certain. Whatever came next, we would face it together. The worst was over. But our journey was far from finished. Six months after Nate's arrest, I stood in our new apartment, surrounded by half-unpacked boxes. Jamie's laughter drifted from his room, where he was playing with his grandmother. The sound warmed my heart, a reminder of the innocence we'd managed to preserve despite everything. Claire? Mom called. There's someone at the door for you. I opened the door to find Detective Morris, his face grave. Mrs. Sanford, we need to talk. My heart raced as I invited him in. What's wrong? Is it Nate? Morris sighed. I'm afraid so. He's made a deal with the prosecution. In exchange for a reduced sentence, he's agreed to testify against his associates. I sank onto the couch, emotions swirling. What does this mean for us? It means you and Jamie might be called to testify. And, he hesitated, there's a chance you could be targeted by the people Nate's turning on. The room spun. Just when I thought we were safe, just when we were starting to rebuild. What do we do? I whispered. We can offer you witness protection, Morris said gently. A new life, a new identity. I looked around the apartment at the life we'd just begun to create. The thought of leaving it all behind was overwhelming. Can I have some time to think about it? Morris nodded. Of course, but please be careful, and call me if you notice anything suspicious. After he left, I sank to the floor, tears streaming down my face. Mom found me there, wrapping me in her arms like she did when I was a child. Oh, sweetheart, she murmured. What are we going to do? I looked up at her, suddenly realizing the weight of my decision. It wasn't just about me anymore. It was about Jamie, about Mom, about the family we'd pieced together from the wreckage of my marriage. We're going to fight, I said, my voice stronger than I felt. 
we've come too far to run away now. The next few weeks were a whirlwind. I testified at Nate's trial, facing him across the courtroom with a strength I didn't know I possessed. I watched as the man I once loved was sentenced to years in prison, feeling not triumph, but a deep, aching sadness for what could have been. Through it all, my support system grew. Rachel, my best friend, became a constant presence, helping with Jamie and offering a shoulder to cry on. Kevin, Mom's husband, stepped up as a father figure, teaching Jamie to ride a bike and attending his preschool events. And then there was Oliver. We met at a support group for divorced parents, his kind eyes and gentle humor a balm to my battered heart. Slowly, cautiously, we began to build something new. One evening, as we sat on the balcony watching the sunset, Oliver turned to me. Claire, I know you've been through hell, and I know you're still healing, but I want you to know, I'm here, for as long as you'll have me. I looked at him, this man who had seen me at my worst and still chose to stay, and for the first time in years I felt a flicker of hope for the future. I'd like that, I whispered, squeezing his hand. Later that night, as I tucked Jamie into bed, he asked the question I'd been dreading. Mommy, when is Daddy coming home? I sat on the edge of his bed, choosing my words carefully. Daddy made some mistakes, sweetie. He has to face the consequences. But he loves you very much, and so do I. Jamie nodded, his little face serious. Are we going to be okay? I pulled him close, breathing in the scent of his hair. Yes, my love. We're going to be more than okay. As I closed his door, I caught sight of myself in the hallway mirror. The woman staring back at me was different from the one who had discovered that fateful text message all those months ago. She was stronger, wiser, battle-scarred, but unbroken. I thought of Nate, of the life we'd shared and lost. I thought of Veronica, whose bravery had helped bring the truth to light. I thought of Mom, Rachel, Kevin, and Oliver, the family I'd chosen, the support system that had carried me through the darkest times. And I realized that this... This messy, complicated, beautiful life was exactly where I was meant to be. Not running, not hiding, but standing tall, facing whatever came next with courage and grace. As I crawled into bed that night, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. The journey wasn't over, not by a long shot, but for the first time in a long time, I was excited to see where it would lead.